Okay, uh, my name is Dr. Keith Miller, uh, and I'm going to use this uh, demonstration to illustrate uh, one of the important things that you can do with seismic waves, which is locate where an earthquake is. Uh, you can actually use the characteristics of seismic waves, in particular the traces that seismic waves make on a seismograph, in order to locate the origin or the focus or epicenter of an earthquake. And the way this is done is to use the difference in velocities between P and S waves. P waves are compressional waves, again, where the motion is in the same direction, the vibrational motion is in the same direction as the propagation of the waves. S waves are shearing waves, which are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. P waves are also called the primary waves. That is, they're the fastest waves, they have the highest velocity. S waves are secondary waves. That is, they travel second fastest. So P waves and S waves travel at different velocities. And we can use that different in difference in velocities to actually precisely locate where an earthquake has happened. Okay, again, I have some uh, brave student volunteers uh, helping with this demonstration. Uh, what I'd like you to do is stand here right next to each other with your side to side, with your toes kind of lined up on the same line on the floor here, because they're in the same position. Okay? And you will be the P wave of the day, and you will be the S wave. So this will be kind of like red light, green light. Okay? So you as P wave are going to be traveling faster. You're going to have a higher velocity. Right? So that means when I say go, I want you still to walk slowly, but kind of normal pace walk forward. You, since you're an S-way pair, travel more slowly. So when I say go, again, you just take smaller steps. And just kind of slow, as steady as you can, but short steps. Okay? And at a certain point, I'll say stop. When I say stop, then you freeze in the position that you are. Okay, understand? Okay? So, go. Stop. Okay? Now, I'm standing about where they started. Notice that they both started at the same time and at the same place. So when seismic waves are generated, all those different seismic waves are going to be produced at the same time and at the same place. So all the same starting position. Now, a period of time has elapsed, and now there's a difference in distance between where the S wave is and where the P wave is. That's also a time difference. In other words, if I was in this location, the P wave would arrive, and then there would be a time delay, and then the S wave would arrive. Okay, so they've separated over time. Now, I'm going to start them up again, so go. Okay, stop. Notice I'm still standing here about at the starting point. Not only have they moved forward, but the distance between them has increased. Okay? So this is the important critical point in understanding how this works. Because the longer the time is, the longer the P and S waves keep traveling, the further apart they get. The further apart they get, the greater the time delay between the P waves and the S waves. Because that is a predictable kind of mathematical relationship, we can use that time delay to tell how long those waves are traveling. So we can actually work backwards and say, okay, at what position would those waves have to be in order to have that separation? How long would that have to be? So we can tell when the earthquake happened, and we can tell where it happened. 